12 weapons and children's picks, and I only play one of them. This video is going to be fun. First up is the Aerospray PG. The Aerospray is the original Turn the Brain Off weapon, and the PG stands for Please Charge Booyah Bomb All the Goddamn Time. If you've noticed a lot more Booyah Bombs going off in Turf Wars in the past couple of months, well, this weapon is the reason. In fact, it really should have just been called the Booyah Bomb Charger, since that's seriously the only thing it's good at. The most optimal play is to charge Booyah Bomb in the corner and launch one every 15 to 20 seconds. But let me ask you this. Is Booyah Bomb a good enough special to justify one team member doing nothing but charging it for an entire match? No. The main weapon on its own is butt garbage. It has a super high fire rate and covers ground really well, but it has short range, is a five shot kill, and it shoots about as straight as the cast of Queer Eye. Great show by the way, I highly recommend it. You only want to actually try to use it to get a kill if you already have a teammate shooting at the same person, or if you're in super close range like Captain Nipple Grab over here. And five of your wild shots land back to back. Your best option for head-to-head -head offense is burst bombs, and by that I mean, if someone tries to interrupt your booyah bomb charging, then throw out a burst bomb or two as a distraction, run away, and go back to charging up that booyah. To be fair though, this is the best aerospray kit of the three options, so if you must use the aerospray, at least use this one. The aerospray is really good at one specific thing, but that one thing might not be particularly useful. So out of a possible 3D printer that only prints Wario Amiibo, I give it a free same-day delivery, but only on cans of LaCroix. No. <laughs> this isn't how you're supposed to play the game. Alright, look. You can play Splatoon any way you want, and you can pick a weapon that fits your personality. You play Duelist if you're a tryhard. You play Charger if you hate people. You play tri slasher if you suck at aiming. You play Jet Squelcher if you're a little bit Long Range Savant. And you play Spushomatic if you want to lose. I'll be blunt here. If someone tells you the Spushomatic is a top tier weapon, they're either not very good at the game, or they... We made it up. We made this one up. It's a made-up tale. It's a total fabrication. It never happened. I'm not saying it's impossible to do well to Spoosh. There is like 0.001% of Spoosh players that are actually okay with it. I'm saying it's straight up not designed for success. And that's because it's the worst main weapon in the entire game. At least the Aerospray can be a paint bot. The Spoosh is short range and inaccurate, so its actual effective range is even shorter than where it paints. It's half a step above Aerospray in terms of ability to get kills, but that's it. They both have the same property of being very short range and having inaccurate shots. This weapon is the fly of Splatoon. Very annoying, but mostly harmless. The only strength of this weapon is its speed. You've got supersonic speed with it. You can zip around the map fast and people went horny on main for that new 17 year old girl in Persona 5 the Royale with cheese. And you're gonna need all the speed you can get, considering that in order to go from spoosh to splooge and actually get a kill with this omatic, you gotta be close enough to snack on damn titties for all your shots to hit. Speed and stealth are gonna be your best friends. The only way the spoosh can do moderately well, at least for what I've seen, is to constantly and very annoyingly flank the other team and try to sneak up on them from behind. But this isn't always the most optimal play, since you have to completely ignore objective, and there are other weapons that are good at flanking too, plus can do other things better than the sploosh. Also, the sploosh is somehow the most likely weapon in disconnect. All I'm saying is sploosh disconnect is a true combo. There's like a 30% chance that someone using the sploosh is going to disconnect from the match. The 
The spoosh itself may be garbage, but for the spoosh 7, this sub and special waffle fries and soda combo are anything but that. This is the best spoosh matic but it's a real spiciest of three chode situation if you know what I mean. There's been plenty of videos where I've given this flat bomb and over the pants hand job, so I'm not going to repeat myself too much here, just know that they're super versatile and super good. An ultra stamp is quickly becoming the new stingray of Splatoon, you can't change my mind about that. People are picking weapons because of the special, and just spamming it the whole match, and that's definitely the case with the spoosh 7. With a little practice, the hammer can quickly change a bad situation to a good one just by riding the hammer into whatever's in front of you like your Naruto running into Area 51. This weapon is intended for dumb kids and stupid people and it doesn't deserve all the attention it gets. So out of a possible Fortnite, I give it a TikTok. first short range year in this video that's actually somewhat viable, just check this chart of year in college versus high level viability. The NZAP is a lightweight shooter that lets you run around very fast while shooting, especially if you stack a brunch, a brunch, a brunch, a bunch of run speed. Just run around getting kills, not a ton of nuance here with the NZAP. If you're thinking of using the spoosh matic just use the NZAP instead. But I'm not too sure about this kit though. Inkstorm is pretty alright, but it's more useful for zoning people out than actually doing damage, and Sprinkler as your sub weapon means you'll just charge up Inkstorm faster, leaving your main weapon as your only real form of offense. So let me ask you this. Is the Enzap a good enough main weapon to have it as your only real form of offense? I don't know, probably not. However, this kit can probably help you out in splat zones, using the Sprinkler to paint and the Inkstorm to paint more. This Enzap is the best Enzap at painting. Motherfucker, Picasso ass weapon. It's a pretty classic weapon, so for rating, I give it a use the cans! If you're playing Duck Hunt, use the cans! These next two weapons give me war flashbacks from Splatoon 1. The H3 is a very good weapon that's also very difficult to use since it requires good aiming. Luckily for you, I'm an H3 expert. He was not an H3 expert. Y'all remember the squeezer and how you can triple tap the trigger to do a pep 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 shot and get a quick kill? Yeah, me neither. I blocked that weapon out from my memory. But anyways, with the squeezer, the pep 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 was manual, but with the H3, it's automatic. One press of the trigger shoots out three shots, and if all three bullets hit the target, that's a one-shot KO. There's a little bit of delay before you can shoot another burst, so you want to lock into the rhythm of the delay. You gotta feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme. Get on up, it's H3 time. You also want to keep the controller steady immediately after pressing the trigger to shoot, so that your three bullets come out in a straight line behind one another. This really is an aim then shoot weapon, not an aim while shooting weapon if that makes sense. But if one or two of your bullets miss, shoot again obviously. You want to aim at an angle that's close to the tangent of the target's velocity, so that your target has less of a chance to dodge one or two of the bullets and live. But then again, you don't really get to pick the direction of the target's velocity vector. But maybe if you use the map layout to your advantage, you can limit your opponent's options? You know what? Screw it. No one's gonna understand this part. Note to self, edit this out later. 
He did not edit this out later. Cherry H3 is the defensive H3. You can advance with a splash wall, stand behind it, and start shooting shit. Make sure you throw it out before you're getting shot at though, since it doesn't deploy very quickly. And Bubble Blower, uh, helps with defense too sometimes? This weapon can be great in the right hands, but also a real pain in the booty to use sometimes. So for a rating, I give it an AH out of possible AH! It's the Range Blaster, which thankfully is not nearly as good as it was in the first game, since playing Blaster really well relies heavily on taking advantage of the stage geometry, and there aren't too many maps in Splatoon 2 that can do that compared to Splatoon 1. With the main weapon alone, if you miss twice, that's still a kill. If you hit him once, it's a one-hit KO. So let me ask you this. Don't that sound like some bullshit? Yes. If you can score nothing but directs, then good for you, Jesus. But if you can't, that's fine. After you hit one indirect, your opponent will most likely run away, so predict slash guess where they're gonna go next, and you gotta shoot your shot over there like you're an incel DMing a sexy Twitch streamer. The key to using any blaster, especially the range blaster, is positioning your opponents in optimal blaster range. Too far away, you can't hit them. Too close, and you either need to quickly hit a direct or run away. Keep them near your blaster pop range, and when they move, you move with them. The Grim Range Blaster has burst bombs, which complement it pretty nicely. If you hit your target with a direct burst bomb hit, then any sort of indirect blaster shot can get you a kill. If you hit them with an indirect burst bomb throw, which is more likely, then you need to hit at least a pretty good blaster indirect shot to get that victory royale! Burst bombs can also help you overcome fighting someone who has ink armor equipped, since armor is any blaster's worst nightmare. Oh, also tenor missiles. Uh, It can help you track where the other team is for a little bit and the missiles can do a little bit of damage, so you can follow up with an indirect shot. For a rating, I give the Grim Range Blaster a... Here's the motherfucking T! Also, quick sidebar here, why are the blaster designs so samey? The regular range blaster are just a slightly longer spring in the middle, and the difference between the rapid and rapid pros are just ee on ee on ee on. The inkbrush is fast, it's quick, it's speedy, you're basically skating around the battlefield. You're so fast that this is the only weapon in the game that if you get shot while brushing, you don't slow down. With the ink brush, you gotta use your speed to your advantage and be a master flanker. Trying to fight them head on is stupid. You gotta use your speed to get in from behind and give them the business. Don't take that out of context. And when you get up close, that's when you unleash your flurry of mop swings. It's like a dancing blade. Nobody knows how many hits it takes for this thing to get a kill, so you gotta go crazy on the trigger until your enemies are banished to the Shadow Realm. Be crazy with your fingers like me playing bass the other day. Fucking E-string. Strike fast, then run away. That's the optimal play for the ink brush. It's got short range and a weird, inconsistent hitbox and doesn't paint super well, and it's easy for people to just walk away while you're stringing your brush. But with a permanent ink brush, you got ink armor, which is a temporary shield, and sprinkler, which charges your shield faster, leaving the main weapon as your only source of actual offense. So let me ask you this. Is the ink brush a good enough weapon to be a player's only source of offense? Eh, maybe, but probably not. That being said, I think this is the fastest source of ink armor charge in the entire game. You have a combo sprinkler, rapid swinging, and special charge, so duct tape some armor on top of you before you go charging into battle. Use ink armor when most of your team is live and it'll help them out. 
with the ink brush, you're not playing Splatoon 2 anymore. You're playing a different game. So out of a possible Batman Arkham City, I give it a goose game. The Squiffer is a mid-range weapon that you have to charge up before each shot. So let me ask you this. Does a mid-range weapon that you have to charge up before each shot sound like it's gonna be good? Eh, I've seen people make it work. I've seen some great Squiffer players, and some who are not that. And I'm part of the second group. Guess who has four paws and still doesn't play chargers? Uh, this guy. So here is some questionable tips for the Squiffer that are completely made up and may or may not be true. Charge up your squiffer behind the corner of a wall or something so that the other team can't see your laser, then fire. Charge from far away, then soar your charge and swim into range, then fire. Suction bombs are good, probably. Also inkjet is good if you got good aim. Now here's some unethical tips that are definitely not true. The squiffer is secretly a great frontline slayer. Why else would its range be so short? The Squiffer is secretly a great backline support weapon. Why else would you have to charge it up? Don't charge the Squiffer. Just use only the tap shots. They come out way faster than charging it up. Why would you charge it up? The Squiffer is a weapon. So for a rating, I give it a Mr. Clean. Out of a possible Mr. Clean. I ain't so good with the bamboozler, and I never will be, but here's two tips. Stack a bunch of main power up. This charger charges the fastest, but it's the only one that doesn't want to hit KO from a full charge. But if you equip main power up here, here, and here, at least three mains and four subs, you can do 99.9 damage in a single shot. No one's ever at full health in this game. If your enemy even thought about anime ink yesterday morning while taking a shower, they'll take 0.1 damage. So stacking main power up turns the bamboo to the real charger. I recorded most of this footage during the splat fest, so I wasn't even able to use enough main power up. But even then I was still able to one shot some fools not at full health. And tip number two, full charge then tap shot to follow up. Even with zero main power up, a full charge and a tap shot is a KO, so get in the habit of doing that. With the Bamboozler Mark III, you can blow your special bubbles out, and then with a full charge fizzy bomb, they'll all explode instantly if all the angles are lined up real nice like. The Bamboozler is made out of bamboo, so for a rating I give it a panda out of a possible Panda. How many weapons are left? Four more? Yeah, that's so many. All right, it's time for an ad.
The Heavy Splatling is all about hunkering down and being a supportive anchor. You just stay in the back and shoot a lot. If you want some mediocre tips on how to be an anchor, I don't know, maybe just watch my explosion videos. Not like I, you know, spend a lot of time really hard working on that thing or nothing. Anyway, there's two flavors of splatling that you can be. A stationary splatling, where you gotta stay in one spot for most of the match, and a mobile splatling, where you walk around a lot during the match. But the heavy splatling ain't too great at close quarters combat unless you have the chance to do a quick quarter charge and then get the kill on someone up close. If you're gonna be a stationary splatling, you gotta watch out for flankers. And if you're gonna be a mobile splatling, you gotta watch out for everyone. Maybe strike a balance between the two depending on the situation? But what do I know, I don't play anchor anymore. But what I do know is that you have to have great situational awareness when playing splatling. But if you can charge at the right time and fire at the right time, then the other team will be more out of commission than seven out of eight available Slurpee flavors at every 7-Eleven I go to. How is the Slurpee machine broken every time? Selling Slurpees is your whole thing! Also, heavy splatling can easily kill through the front of an ultra stamp. There's no joke here, I just think that's worth mentioning. Point sensor is good in solo due to limited communication. You can throw a point sensor and start charging before it connects, then aim where it tags. Tagging the other team with point sensor at every chance you get can help you avoid being flanked since you already see him coming. Booyah Bomb is also good as a more immediate threat to the other team, and can maybe save you if you get flanked if you're quick enough on the activation. It's the remix splatling, so for a rating, I give it a... The Dapple Duelies are the spoosh of Duelies. Just kidding, these things are actually viable. They have very short range, but they got the fast rolls and fast shots and they're a three shot kill, so you can get in close and tear it up like a dead rat in an ATM. Using the clear Dapple Duelies, also known as the Clapples, is like the spoosh and other micro PP range weapons, it's all about using your speed to your advantage to get in close so that you're within kill range. You can throw a torpedo to distract your opponent and buy you some time to close the gap. With the torpedo in the air, your target will have to choose between shooting down the torpedo or shooting you. And most people will try to do both quickly. You can also roll the torpedo to do some damage before shooting. Uh, also splashdown can get you out of a pinch sometimes, yeah, yeah, whatever. If the spoosh is like the fly of Splatoon weapons, then the dapples are like the mosquito. Hard to hit, just as annoying, but can actually do a lot of damage. Dapples have the shortest dodge roll distance, but they're also the fastest rolls, so if you roll a lot, you'll be hard to hit. Also, stealth works too. For these Colgate ass extra whitening duelies, I give them a brush your teeth. Brush your teeth. Brush your teeth. Also, flaws. Tentabrella is, stop me if you've heard this one before, 
a very good weapon that is also very difficult to use. It takes a lot of excellent timing and patience. It can even get one-hit KOs up close, but it's really hard to pull up consistently. And that's because the startup time and end lag between the Brella Blast is ridiculous! You can hit the trigger, put the controller down, preheat the oven, run with the dog, put your chicken nuggets in the oven, and then maybe the Brella Blast has come out. And then by the time your chicken nuggets are done, the shields finally popped open, and then by the time the chicken nuggets have cooled off and you've eaten them, you're finally ready to fire another shot. But if you practice a lot, you can time out the shield opening well and use excellent positioning, this weapon can be basically invincible. It's kind of BS if I'm honest with you. Have you ever tried to fight someone who's actually good with this thing? You can't hit them! And that shield ain't gonna break anytime soon! This is the part of the video where you like insert a reference to Reinhardt from Overwatch, because they like look the same, I think? I don't know, I've, I've, I haven't actually played Overwatch. But yeah, other than from a handful of specials, that shield ain't gonna break! But anyway, the trick is, keep your shield between you and your opponent, even if you launch it. Yeah, I know, real riveting advice. Use the shield to take the hit instead of your body! But if you want to stay alive longer, then uh, you know, do that. It also takes a lot of ink to launch the shield, so you can launch it and then hide behind it in the ink to refill a little bit before shooting. With ink mines, you can... place them? And with the Ultra Step, you can go from ultimate defense to ultimate offense! The enemy will think they've got you cornered and suddenly, stamp. Hammer time. Ultra Stamp is like knockoff over-the-counter Viagra. It always lasts longer than you think it would, so use that to your advantage. For a rating, I give the Camo Tent Umbrella a uh, going camping in the woods and getting murdered out of seven. Before our final weapon, if we could have a moment of remembrance for non-returning Sheldon's picks, forever stuck in Splatoon 1, since they received boring looking Kensa variants instead. The Slosher is the only Sheldon's Pick recipient that I consistently use, and by that I mean I used it consistently in 2017 and have barely used it since. That being said, it's still one of my best weapons, hashtag Slosher Gang, so consider this section a remake to the original Has Slosher video. The Slosher is a great weapon with great range, a fast kill time, and a lot of utility. The Slosher also has one of the most jank-ass hitboxes in the entire game. Unlike in Splatoon 1, sometimes you'll have targets that'll forget that you have the same range as the Splatter Shop, so use that to your advantage. Other times, you'll be aiming right at your target and still somehow miss or do really pitiful damage since this thing suffers from really bad falloff damage. Luckily, using some main power up can help abate some of that damage reduction. Heh <laughs> heh, abate. Anyways, even though in real life you'd want to dump a bucket on someone from above, in this game you want to make sure you're sloshing into them, not onto them. This will reduce your chance of getting what I refer to as a phantom hit, where your ink covers where the target is, but they'll take no damage somehow. Also, it's hard to hit people who are like strafing from side to side, and if you miss one slosh, then your life is over. Also, if you're going to try attacking someone at point blank range, then... That's no good. Instead, if you stay back from them strafe it boys and keep at range, you'll eventually hit them. As far as the sub and special goes, well, it's not one of my videos unless I strap on my knee pads for splat bombs, and that's because I basically main them and they're amazing and will be the father of my children. You can use the splat bombs to attack someone outside your bucket range. If someone takes some chip damage from a bomb, then it only takes one direct slosh to finish them off, so keep that in mind. Throwing a bomb in a high arc may distract someone because they'll have to dodge it, giving you time to rush in with your excellent bucket. With your special fully charged, you can activate Ultra Instinct Slosher. And you have two options. You can either have patience and use the very high class and refined T and Crumpet Slosher combo from Splatoon 1, and hit them with a direct burst bomb hit followed by a slosh, and it'll be a super quick KO. You can decimate an entire team in seconds with this. Or you can do what I do and have no patience at all with Burst Bomb Launcher, pop a couple of mollies, inject your horse steroids, demand a refund on your spoosh matic and go absolute bananas on the right bumper. Burst Bomb's flying all over the place, you're gonna hit something. 
It's a great weapon with a funky fresh color scheme. So for a rating, I give this weapon a ja out of a possible zzzz. Give us your love.